This is a sample project based on P3 Express, and it's also based on a real project that happened, but we just changed around some of the names. All right, so the name of the project is Dayton Bridge Project. So you have an idea what's it about, and our project manager is Henry Asir. Good. So what was the goal of the project? Well, the goal of the project was to build a bridge and replace this one. So this, let's say, was Dayton Bridge or something like that in 2019, which didn't really look great, okay? Especially when the rainy season comes, probably not a good idea to use it. And on the right is what we wanted to end up with. So we wanted a bridge that would support two cars and make it easier for people to access the local village, which is Daytown Village. Great. So what was the project description? Our project description is a document that's used right through the project because it's it aligns the project or gives the project direction. So it's a bit like the project charter, let's say, or a project brief. So we start off with the purpose. So what's the purpose of the project? Well, the purpose of the project is to construct a two-lane bridge to provide a multiple route to the Daytown village. Right, that's fairly clear. The expected benefits of this for, I suppose, for the local town, the local village, the town, and the whole district. Well. We will support cars, trucks, and motorcycles. Great, because that's not done for the moment. Easier access of farmers to get to the town market. Fantastic, because now they have to carry over. Um, maybe have two cars to get there. Uh, then easier for access for the workers for the local town, especially if they have to drive. Again, they won't need two cars anymore. Easier to access the daytime village for district services. So easier for district services to come into the local village. All right, that's all very good, and those are good examples of benefits. Then we have requirements and quality expectations. So what should be here? And if any of these things are missing, then maybe we cannot use the bridge as expected. Right, the first thing is when we need to function the bridge. Good, so it must operate like it's supposed to be want. Conform to all safety regulations. Good, because otherwise if that doesn't happen, we won't get signed off and maybe we cannot use it. That would be a problem. Materials to meet required technical specifications. Again, we need sign off by the engineers, otherwise the bridge cannot go into production. Uh, the bridge is six meters span by 1.5 meters high. Okay, good, that's the measurement requirements. And then a single span reinforced concrete bridge, which will be defined in the specifications better as well and what that means. Good. Now, who should be involved in the project? So who should the project manager make sure that they are involved in the project, kept up to date? and um, help to guide the project to a successful end in the time required. The project manager has identified these. We have the program manager from the local district for all these kinds of projects. We have Henry, of course, who's a project manager. Henry has also decided to ask a recruitment team member to come in and help with all the purchasing and the contracts. Also a financial officer to keep an overview of the budget spending. Then we have the province district council member. We have the district coordinator district engineer um, in on the project as well. SLRA member, I don't know what that actually is, but Henry said it was important. And also the chief councillor, so they will represent the people in the local village as well. Okay, good. Now a quick overview of expected costs and duration. This is very short. We have an estimated budget of 42,000 uh, US dollars with a contingency of plus or minus 5%. And the project will take about 12 months to do, maximum 12. Actually, the whole goal is about 10 months. So that is the project description, and it gives a very, very good direction for the project and a great example for a project description document as well. Next, we asked Henry, Henry, how would you break down the project into deliverables? Henry said the first deliverable will be our district application. Then we have to do a feasibility technical assessment. Then we consider like what's got to be done in the project plan, the layout of this to all the deliverables that we need to create the, the, for the project plan. Then we look at the different recruitment uh, de deliverables there. Then mobilization, which was here. These are the three deliverables here. Reinforcement, uh, the form work for the bridge as well. Then we have the concrete work. These are our deliverables. We have the railings, of course, which will be put up almost very last. And then at the very, very end, we do the backfill. So all of these um, are our deliverables, and the majority of them, almost up them all, will have specifications documented to define actually what should be in each deliverable um, and what should be produced in order to get it signed off. Okay, so that's a really good example as well of a breakdown of this project.
The next question we asked Henry was, how do you plan the project? Henry said the following. We used a Gantt chart uh, because this is a kind of a predictive project, so it was easier to have an overview. The project went from the second week of January until, let's say, uh, October. And we divided the project up into two parts. Once we have the pre-contract uh, deliverables, so submit district application forms, feasibility study, creating a project plan, which is this plan here, actually, recruitment uh, deliverables as well, making sure that everything was ready and on hand because we wanted to start. Then we have the mobilization um, deliverables here. Uh, before I go on to that, this is a milestone here. Then the mobilization uh, deliverables, uh, reinforcement deliverables, uh, the formwork deliverables, concrete work, dismantled work, railings and backfill and we have a buffer of a week here okay and that's actually a good uh, a good again it's a good example of a breakdown of this or a schedule overview of this project divided into weeks but also representing each month as well great next what were some of the risks you identified okay this is the information we got back I'll just read out two examples here, but these are very well, well written also. So due to the slow financial uh, processes, there is a risk of delayed payments to suppliers, which can impact the project in the following ways. We have time overruns and the project running into the rainy season. So we don't want that to happen because suppliers will refuse to work, of course, if they're not getting paid. So a response, how do we deal with this? The financial department will make all payments within two weeks of receiving the certifications. They'll also notify as well. And the financial officer is the custodian, so they have to look after this and make sure that this is done correctly and inform uh, the necessary stakeholders as well. So just one more. Due to the number of active projects, there is a risk of delay in measuring and approving the completed works, so getting engineers to sign things off. And the impact of this will be time overruns in the project, and again, the project running into the very same season. So it has the exact same impact so how do we deal with this? So the response that Henry has chosen for this. The project manager will confirm with the district engineer to send another person if they cannot make it. So there's always a, sub a substitute available. And the custodian is the district engineer themselves. They will look after this. So again, that's another good example. And you can look at the two others by yourself. Okay. Uh, that's it actually for an overview on this project. I hope you um, enjoyed it. If you need more information on this or would like to break your project down into an easy overview like this, you can just contact Ransford or George and they will be happy to help you. All right. Hope you've enjoyed this. Bye bye.